He's a former All-Pro. He's a new free agent. Is he a solution to a problem that the Texans have? Welcome into the channel. I'm Cody Stutes. Let's talk some Texans, and let's talk about the artist formerly known as Darius Leonard. Shaquille Leonard is a free agent, the former Colts linebacker, and for a stretch there, one of the best linebackers in all of football. Last year, coming off of back surgery, didn't look so hot, only played it a few games. And then this year, Indianapolis Colts, in a surprising move, get rid of him, wave him. Nobody claims him because he's got a few million bucks left on that contract. And now he's a free agent and can sign with anybody. Texans fans, do you want Shaq Leonard on this team? Well, there's a lot to dig into on his potential candidacy to be a Texans linebacker. Let's sift through some of the things. Let's talk about the player himself specifically. Shaq Leonard if healthy and showcasing anything close to what he did for a three, four year stretch where he was one of the best linebackers in football, it's an automatic. Yes. It's an automatic. Yes. Add him in, find a way to put him on the field. If he's close to that player, but that back injury that he suffered that caused him to have surgery that caused him to have a slow start to 2022 and then ultimately robbed him of most of 2022 and then has maybe affected his overall level of play here in 2023 is a big question mark. What does Shaq Leonard have left in the tank? Now, I understand that the talent level, even if it's dropped a little bit, is better than some of the players that the Texans have, but you also have to factor in what Shaq Leonard wants as well. Look, it's not just sign Shaq Leonard because you want Shaq Leonard. It's a takes two to tango situation. He's got to like the situation that he's coming into. Now you look at the opportunity that he has one game against the Indianapolis Colts, a couple of games against the Tennessee Titans and a team that's in a playoff hunt. That seems like a pretty good opportunity for Leonard, but he was upset about playing time in Indianapolis. They had sort of knocked down his playing time. They'd taken away third downs. He talked to the media and said, Hey, that's even took away second down plays for him. So for Leonard, there's a little bit of an element of, hey, is there money out there? If there's not money out there, it's the same across the board. What type of team does Leonard ultimately want to play on? And then when he figures out what type of team, I believe the big question for Leonard is how much is Leonard going to play? Now, why does he fit potentially with the Texans? Well, Denzel Perryman's down for at least another week with the NFL suspension, and you never know when the NFL might bring the hammer down on him again and have him out for a couple of more games. It happened to Kareem Jackson. Now, Kareem Jackson's an extreme example. The former Texan safety and corner turned Bronco safety. He got suspended, got his suspension down for too many unnecessary roughness hits, and then took a big shot on Josh Dobbs this past weekend and got suspended another four games. No appeal. You're down for four games. We know the NFL kind of looks out for guys who are repeat offenders. That's part of the reason Perryman got suspended in the first place. I don't want that to happen. It's just something that you may have to have in the back of your mind if you're planning in the Texans. So Denzel Perryman's down for another week. Some depth pieces in this linebacker room, Jake Hansen, Henry To'o To'o, they're recovering from injuries. And so you look at Blake Cashman and Christian Harris as kind of the starters with Corey Littleton, Garrett Wallow uh, working into the mix there as well for the Texans. And all of a sudden, Shaq Leonard starts to sound like a pretty darn good option for the depth. Now, when To'o To'o is healthy, this team's clearly trusted him. When Denzel Perryman is back from the suspension, this team has clearly trusted him. You can't take Cashman off the field. He's playing like a man possessed right now. So what exactly is the fit for Leonard? And you start thinking about how the Texans have operated, the knowledge that's required for the defense, and how tough the linebacker spot is to play in this defense. Look, I'm not saying that it's impossible to learn. I'm not doing one of those Bill O'Brien things from a couple of years ago where he acted like you had to be a scientist to figure out how to play wide receiver for him. But it's tough to play linebacker. They asked him to do a lot. They asked him to be versatile. And obviously they hope for some athleticism in these linebackers as well. If Leonard's healthy, and motivated and wants to play for the Texans, he checks a lot of boxes. He can play a couple of different spots. He's obviously a freaky athlete. He's really good. He's a really smart linebacker as well, so you can trust him, but he still has to catch up and pick up the system. It's not just throw him out there and let him swim. There's a lot of things in the cohesion with the front four, in the communication with the back four. Those linebackers are asked to do a lot in D'Amico Ryan's 
system. And I just feel like the experience, even though Henry Toto is a rookie, it's Denzel Perryman's first year in the system. Hell, it's everybody's first year in this system for the most part. Even though they've only got a few weeks of advantage over Leonard, that's a hurdle that he may have to overcome. But you have to start thinking, does the talent outweigh some of the growing pains that he may have for a week or two while he picks these things up? Ultimately, if you believe in Shaq Leonard and you believe that he can help, he's a much better depth piece than, say, Corey Littleton. He's a much better depth piece than Jake Hansen or Garrett Wallow. We know this team's looking for guys to help out in the linebacker spot because they promoted Garrett Wallow from the practice squad to the active roster. They went and got Corey Littleton, brought him back into the equation. He actually played a little bit more than he had with Perryman down, with To'o To'o down, but it's not just a depth opportunity that I believe Leonard's looking for. He's mad about no third downs, then he was mad about no second downs in Indianapolis. I don't know that he's signing up to be a bit player or a part-time player for this Texans team. And I have to imagine, even if it's a okay team or a out, kind of outside the playoff picture team, maybe even a bad team, Leonard would like to go in there and rebuild some value heading into free agency. If he plays really well down the stretch here, doesn't matter what team, he hits free agency again there in the offseason with a higher profile than he does now, which is, hey, most teams would take you from a veteran minimum standpoint get in the building and let's just see what you have. And if you don't have it, if it's lost, that's probably the big benefit to this. If he gets in the building and it doesn't work, uh, there's not some sort of significant investment in Leonard. So as we think about this Texans team and we think about the linebacking room, if he's close to the previous Shaq Leonard or you believe he could get close to that for the Texans, it's a yes. You find a way to use him. You find a way to fit him in with Blake Cashman, Denzel Perryman, Christian Harris and Henry Toto, and you put together a really, really nice linebacking room. But if Leonard wants a lot of playing time, he wants a lot of opportunity, maybe he wants more money than just a little bit of the veteran minimum crumbs. I don't know that it's a totally good fit for the Texans because he's a well known player. He's a well thought of player across the league. And this is a guy with a reputation that doesn't want to sit on the bench. So if he doesn't want to sit on the bench, you can't bring him in and put him on the bench. So I'm going to say for right now, Shaq Leonard's a no for me. I'd be happy to be wrong that he can come in and be a role player. It doesn't seem like he's after that role player spot, though. So for right now, as I go Roman Emperor on this, I'm going to go thumbs down on adding Shaq Leonard, though it would be fun to see him maybe make a huge play in the final week of the season against the Indianapolis Colts to help seal, I don't know, the AFC South for the Houston Texans. Wouldn't that be sort of a nice little storybook situation for the Texans and for Leonard to go against his former team? Plus, you'd also have three Shaqs at that point. You have Shaq Mason, Shaq Griffin, you have Shaq Leonard. That'd be a nice little record to break if you were the Texans. Most Shaqs ever on a team. I, don't fact check me on that. I don't know if that's actually a record. Do throw me a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Appreciate you watching this. Turkey Day right around the corner. Happy Thanksgiving to you and to yours. I'm thankful for so many of the supporters of this YouTube channel. I'm thankful for you wanting to talk Texans with me here on YouTube. And I'm thankful for everybody that goes down to the description, checks out Houston football, where I do all my writing about the Houston Texans as well. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I can't wait till we talk Texans again soon.